Come on. You ready? One, two, three. Hold me now. Did you know that we can import entire MIDI files into GarageBand and GarageBand will assign separate instruments automatically? It's true. Let's jump in and take a look. So I'm here in a new project. I'm going to just go into the audio recorder. We don't need to use this, but I need to get over to track view mode. I'm going to tap on the track view mode here and is going to bring this one up here. Now, what I need to do before we actually import this is actually go and get ourselves a MIDI file. So we're going to go over to Safari here. So I'm going to swipe up here, or you're going to double tap on your device if it's got a uh, if it's got a button. And uh, Safari's already open here. And what you'll notice is I'm already here at a little website called MIDIWorld.com. Now this is pretty cool. Uh, if you just go to MIDIWorld.com, what you can do is download free MIDI files of a whole bunch of different music. So if we came in here, if you search for something, uh, you know, let's let's search something. Whoop, wrong keyboard. Let's search something like this and hit search, then it's gonna find any songs. There you go, you can find a whole bunch. Now we're not gonna use that particular band, I'm not gonna even mention them because um, we're gonna be sort of riding on the edge a little bit here. But one song that I really like is, uh, is an 80s song by this band. And again, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna mention them. Uh, okay, well, it's the Thompson Twins, because they're pretty generic. And uh, in my experience, they're pretty cool. And they probably won't try and uh, try and block or, uh, or remove this, uh, this demo. So all you need to do is when you're in here, you're in Safari, if you're using iOS 13 or iPad OS 13 or above or 14, then you can actually download here in Safari. Don't ignore that it says, please install Flash. We don't need Flash, we can download these. So I'm gonna grab Hold Me Now from the Thompson Twins, classic, classic 80s track. We're gonna tap on download and look what it does here. It goes to a new window and it says, did you want to download it? We're gonna say yes. We're gonna hit the download button. It's put it there, it's already downloaded. MIDI files are really small because all they are is information about what notes being played and what instrument to choose. So now we can actually bring this over into GarageBand. If we swipe up and then we're gonna go back to GarageBand, what we can do, here in our loops icon. Now this is where we bring in things like Apple loops. You can see here I was playing around with the backlight bounce pack. We can bring in our own audio files here and look, I've already tried a few. I've already tried some uh, some Billy Joel and some Led Zeppelin. Uh, we're gonna do some Thompson Twins here, yeah. So we're gonna tap and drag this one in across and release. Uh, look what happens, yeah? <laughs> It grabs all of these and it tries to assign instruments to each of these tracks. Now, off the bat, it does an okay job, but nothing to write home about. So you can see here we've got, um, like lead vocals is just what we had in there to begin with. We can delete that. We don't need that. So we've got drums. We've got classic clean guitar. We've got some piano. We've got some mini marimba. We've got some uh, a choir. We've got an acoustic guitar. We've got the chimera hammer there, a synth sound. And we've got a couple of strings here. So it's going to give it a crack because the original MIDI instruments, the general MIDI instruments are not exactly mapped to what we have in GarageBand but it will do an okay job. How good a job? Well, let's turn down the volume because I know MIDI tracks always come through super loud and let's just play it, shall we? And see what uh, see what we get. We'll turn off the metronome. We don't need that. We'll hit play and let's take a listen, shall we? Okay. Not bad. Now, if you know this song, I know where Thomas Christ is grooving along. Uh, if you know this song, you'll know what it sort of sounds like. We'll, we'll bring it to a part here where we've got uh, maybe a little bit more going on and take a listen. Now, a few things you'll be noticing here. One is why are all our volumes grayed out? Why, why or yellowed out? Why can't we change them? Well, it's because we basically get automation points as part of MIDI. So if we come in here to uh, to say this acoustic guitar and we tap on that, we can go to automation. And when there's no automation, it's just gonna be a single line like this. So there's a couple of options. You can just turn that off and then you've got control over it. So with something like this, where it's just assigned a volume to each, or see, see this one does have an increase, but everything else, what I'm gonna do is just turn all those off. Because if it's, if it's just a volume and it's not actually automating it, we wanna have more control over the volume. So I'm gonna do this. I'm going to turn all of our volumes off. So now we can actually adjust the, the, the actual volume levels without having to go into automation all the time. But we'll let it do its string thing because look, it is, it is doing a little, a, little, uh, a little fade up here. 
on our strings uh, as it goes through for whatever reason. Now, the other thing we can do, if we're not happy with these uh, instruments, we can actually change them. So, uh, for instance, uh, I don't think the classic clean guitar is going to sound super good on this. Let's just solo it and take a listen. It sounds like this. No. Ugh. I think that we need some sort of like synth sound, like a nice warm analog synth there instead. So all we need to do is tap on this piano button and it's going to come out here. And instead of the classic clean, uh, let's go with like a synth lead. And what's a nice one, a nice warm one? Uh, we don't want anything too, what about vintage lead or is that going to be too, is that going to be too, uh, too hard? That might be okay. Let's just try this. No. Uh, so yeah, you, you can play around with this. I won't spend a lot of time with this because you can you can do this in your own time. It's pretty fun. Uh, what about like just a playful melody? Something something a little bit nicer. Uh, yeah, something like that. So let's try this. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. So we, we can change this around and it's a, it's a good way. You can get to know a lot of things about MIDI. You can learn about things. Now we've got some piano here and some mini marimba. I think they sounded okay. Let's just make sure that they're going to be right. Yeah? <laughs> Not bad. We'll, we'll, we'll go with these. What does this choir sound, though? Is this is this going to work for us in our mix? Let's find out. Oh, I, I played it just before the notes there. Oh, it's very soft. It's very soft in the background, so we're not really hearing it. Now, I really don't like the sound of the acoustic guitar. And is this going to... Is this what's doing our melody? Oh, this is doing bass. And you can see that with MIDI, you've even got this booey um booey um So I, I don't want the acoustic guitar doing my bass, do I? So I can change this around. Let's just grab the, uh, the Liverpool bass, shall we? And uh, put that instead. There you go. Now we've got a real bass sound. Now you can see we're building out our arrangement here. We're just playing around with this. Uh, what's the Chimara Hammer? Is it... I don't hate that. We'll leave it there for now. Now the strings, I don't actually like these strings. I find those strings actually pretty harsh. And ironically, the strings that I like are actually the Hollywood strings, which are part of our, uh, our synth sound. So I think they're in synth pads here. And this one here, the Hollywood strings, I think that these just sound like better than, if we take a listen, there's... Right? Don't you reckon that the, the Hollywood strings sound actually better than our synth strings? We'll, we'll let these ones just be the sustained strings down here. So we, we've made a little bit of a made a little bit of a track here now. Let's take a big risk here, shall we? And we'll play this track from the start. I'll do a little bit of mixing on the fly, and I might even sing a couple of couple of lines so that you can hear this because you you will know this track. Um, so here is our here's our intro now with our new instruments. Here's our drums. Come on. You ready? One, two, three. Hold me now. Yeah, that's all I'm going to give you of that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do exactly this experiment yourself at home. Uh, and, and as we, we go through the rest of it, as we go to like later parts of the track, and we play here. Isn't that cool? What a cool way to build yourself out some backing tracks. And, and don't forget, you don't have to just use, you know, old 80s classics. That's uh, what I've used for a few examples here. But you can, of course, uh, use a bunch of different sounds. If you go to MIDI World, again, uh, the midiworld.com, and there's a bunch of other places that you can go to, too. Like, if you're into all sorts of things, like if you want to get a little bit wacky and freaky, like if we took Nirvana in here, uh, look at this. You've got a whole bunch of different Nevada tunes. If you ever wanted to hear the uh, the the electric guitars in GarageBand sound um, <clears throat> interesting, uh, yeah, download something like uh, yeah, some Nirvana, some Negative Creep, or some uh, Floyd the Barber here uh, from Nirvana. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun uh, and something to to play around with. Something a bit different this week. I thought I would show uh, is uh, importing some MIDI files. Uh, have some fun with that. <laughs> 